This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Another Wednesday video, woo! -hoo! So I kind of wanted to do one of the POV videos um, for Wednesday, the show, and I was trying to figure out what character that I wanted to do, and I settled on Xavier. Do I like him as a person? I mean, he's all right. Do I like the ship between him and Wednesday? Absolutely not. But I thought this perspective would be a tad humorous because Homeboy was really going through it. Like I didn't realize how rough he had it throughout the show, but I think think that this might give some insight. I mean, I know in my last video I was hating on him a bunch because like both him and Tyler were picking up on non-existent signals and then getting mad at Wednesday for said signals. At the same time, I can't really blame a person for liking someone. And like Xavier, he wasn't really a bad guy or a bad person. He just kind of was a little bit annoying. Tyler though, Tyler gets on my nerves. Xavier, he's fine. A tad uninteresting, but you know, can't really blame a person for that, can you? But before we get started on Xavier's little journey, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Surfshark. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected. Also, a VPN swaps the real location of your device with a new one so you can virtually travel to any country around the globe. You may be like, Amanda, why would I want to do that? We're talking about Wednesday, the Netflix show, right? It's all the rage right now, and it's available on Netflix globally. But let's say you want to watch the Addams Family movie because you can't get enough of Wednesday and the Gang. The Addams Family movie is only available on Netflix in the US and Canada. So if you don't live in any of these countries, what you can do with Surfshark is change the location of your device to Canada, for example, and boom, you're good to go. Surfshark now has servers in over 100 countries, which is impressive because they're the first premium commercial VPN to achieve this. And they also have a clean web feature which blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, allowing you to surf the web safely. From now until December 31st, you can use my code TODDHUNTER to get 85% off plus three extra months for free. They offer a 30 day money back guarantee. There's no risk to trying it out. So click the link in my description below. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now back to talking about my boy Xavier. So it's midway through the semester at Nevermore. I had a girlfriend named Bianca, but we broke up at the start of the semester because I wasn't sure if she actually liked me or if I actually liked her because she's a siren and she can manipulate people like that. You know, you know how it is. Anyway, it's a regular old school day when Wednesday Adams comes waltzing through the front gates. She's a spooky gal. Apparently she tried to murder a person or two at her old school. But here's the thing. I actually know her because when we were kids, we were both at a funeral together and we decided to play a fun little game of hide and seek. I decided to hide in a casket. I know thinking back on it, probably not the smartest decision. Almost got cremated, but she ended up saving my ass. Good times. Anyway, so because I know her, I've been kind of keeping an eye on her. But here's the thing. Even if I didn't know her, she really really truly made an entrance. I mean, the whole school's talking about her. She even challenged Bianca, queen of the school, to a fencing competition on day one. Here's the other weird thing. I have this roommate named Rowan and he has telekinetic abilities. And you know, ever since Wednesday show up, he's been acting absolutely deranged. He's been rambling about some prophecy where Wednesday and this pilgrim are going to cause the school to erupt into flames. And in order to prevent that, he's trying to kill Wednesday, which is not ideal. One of his attempts was to crush Wednesday with a gargoyle by using his telekinetic abilities and I barely managed to save her ass. Then when I bring her into the infirmary and she wakes up, I reintroduce myself. I remind her of the good old accidental cremation incident. She didn't even remember me though until I mentioned that, so. <laughs> but you know, here's the thing. Ever since then, I don't really know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that she's constantly ignoring me, insulting me, using me for information, generally treats me as if she does not like me. Uh, but this causes me to be absolutely atrociously down bad for her. I see her playing the cello one night night, it was absolutely magnificent. Then at the Harvest Festival, I approach her, but she says she's waiting for someone, and I'm like, who? And then freaking Tyler walks up. Of all people, he's the douchiest of the bags. Then during the fireworks, I see Wednesday run into the woods after Rowan, which was kind of weird, but what was weirder is the next day, she claims that Rowan was killed by some monster, but the whole school sees Rowan himself walking around campus as if nothing had happened. She stops by Archery Club one day asking about Rowan, and it's kind of insane that she's still convinced he's dead, but you know what? To each their own. Anyway, she says she's been talking to Tyler because she needs a ride out of town, and 
I'm like, steer clear if you know what's good for you. And then she calls me an elitist snob and walks away. Then it turns out me and Wednesday are in the same plant class and I offer her the empty seat next to me. And then I try to woo her with my power of making drawings come to life and I even made the spider come to life and instead of being like, oh wow, Xavier, that is so impressive. Like, I think I'm actually falling in love with you. No, she instead uh, squashes it mercilessly. Then one night Bianca comes to my dorm and basically says that we should get back together and I'm like, ew. No. Then it's the day of the Poe Cup and Wednesday is actually participating in it. I didn't expect her to be the school spirit type of gal, but I guess you never really know, do you? But anyway, I'm pretty competitive, so I'm pretty confident I'm going to win. I do in fact lose though. The bottom of our boat got scratched out by Enid, so thanks for that. And then Wednesday's team ended up winning. Then one day, Wednesday stumbled upon the secret nightshade library and I stick my neck out for her saying that we should invite her to join. But then she flat out rejects me in front of everyone. Everybody. So naturally, I'm a tad hurt. She's still asking me about Rowan though, and I'm like, listen, I actually haven't heard from him. I've texted him a few times. I mean, I suppose that's a little suspicious, but maybe he just wants to leave Neverborn in the past. Then she somehow knew that me and Rowan got into a fight and he used his telekinetic abilities to throw me against a wall. So that made me think, hmm, I wonder if she has psychic abilities, visions perhaps. But anyway, now it's volunteer day and I'm stationed at the weather vane with freaking Tyler. Wednesday shows up and has the odd audacity to ask for frickin' Tyler right in front of me, even though I've told her multiple times that he's bad news. I overhear that she's going to check the old meeting house, so naturally I follow her to see what she's doing. It's raining and she says she actually found the monster and because of the tracks on the ground, she's figured out that it's part human, but when we go to look at the ground, the rain already washed the tracks away. How convenient. But anyway, you know what? I'm keeping an open mind and I'm actually starting to believe what she's saying about Rowan because I texted him about a fake memory and he didn't even realize. Then I decide to confront her about her psychic visions. It seems like she's been acting a bit weird lately. And I'm like, look, my dad's a famous psychic. I know a thing or two. And one thing that I do know is that these visions can't be trusted. Like you're just using them to support your crazy narrative. But as per usual, she does not listen to me at all. Later that day when they unveiled the crackstone statue, it burst into flames. So that was fun. Then the day of the Raven is fast approaching. And one day I find Wednesday loitering outside my little art studio in the woods. So I was like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh, we have homework from Thornhill and I was like, no we don't. So that made me thinking why would she create a crappy excuse and the only reason that I could come up with was the fact that she would want to ask me to the Raven and sure enough she does. But then later I actually find Wednesday in my art studio uninvited and that's bad because there are a bunch of pictures of the monster. I've been having a bunch of nightmares and this is my way of like coping with that. So naturally she confronts me about that. I'm like, look, I'm not the monster. I just have nightmares about it. One of the claws even came out of the painting and scratched me. Then she pulls out one of my paintings from her backpack of the monster's lair and I realized that she must have gotten that painting before when I found her loitering outside the art studio which means that the only reason that she asked me to the Raven was so she could cover this whole mess up. So naturally I'm upset. Me and Bianca end up going to the Raven together and guess who Wednesday brings? Freaking Tyler! So that's about my last straw and during the dance I go up to Wednesday and tell her that Tyler and his friends assaulted me and destroyed my mural on outreach day. Maybe this will help her see what a jerk he is, but instead I find them dancing the night away. So I ask Bianca to use her siren song on me to make me forget about Wednesday and she gets mad at me and then I'm left alone to wallow in the blood that is falling from the ceiling. So all in all, a pretty decent night. Then it's parents weekend. I go to apologize to Bianca for all the stuff that happened at the dance and you know, I was feeling pretty good about the fact that me and her both were alone on parents weekend. Neither of her parents were gonna show up until hers does. So it's uh, just me then, just me being alone Great. I think Wednesday's dad ended up getting arrested for murder at some point. Then the words fire will rain were written in fire across the lawn of the school. This had Wednesday in a little bit of a tizzy. She was trying to figure out what's going on still, still trying to figure out a bunch of mysteries regarding the monster and everything. And you know, I was still a bit mad at her for all of the stuff that went down between us, but Enid approached me saying that it's Wednesday's birthday and she's gonna throw a little surprise party for her and asked me to design the cake. And you know what? I was like, sure, I can extend the olive branch. I can be the bigger person. So we threw a surprise party for her at Crackstone's Crypt until Wednesday had a pretty gnarly vision. And later when I go to ask her what it was, she doesn't even tell me because she still thinks that I'm the monster. But if I'm the 
monster. So I'm like, all right, if you need help, you know where to find me. And sure enough, she finds me not too long after. She drew this gate and she asked me if I knew where it was. And I'm like, yeah, it's the old gate's mansion. But then the next thing I know, Thing is exposing me by unveiling the painting I did of Wednesday and her cello. So then I make it come to life because I don't know, maybe she'll find it romantic or something, but she just leaves. So that kind of hurt. And then that night I go to Wednesday's room to try and reconcile or whatever, but the only person I find, well, the only thing that I find in there is Thing. I learned that Wednesday and Enid went to the old Gates mansion, so I decide to follow them. When I get there, I find Enid, Wednesday, and freaking Tyler, who has a scratch across his chest. Apparently they had an encounter with the monster. Then Mayor Walker died, which was pretty surprising as well as sad. Then when I'm trying to find anything related to the monster in the Nightshade Library, Wednesday waltzes in calling out for some Uncle Fester. But you know what? I've just about had it with her. So I take this opportunity to tell her that she doesn't know who her real friends are. I've been on her side since day one. I've literally saved her life. I believed in all her theories when no one else did. And what do I get in return? Jack shit. Then she fully outright accuses me of being the monster and even trying to kill Eugene. And so I'm like, okay, Nancy Drew, if I'm the monster, then why haven't I tried to kill you? And then she's like, well, for some reason you like me. And then I was like, what's to like? Ooh. Then I go to have an emergency therapy session because a lot has been happening recently. And then that night, Wednesday's back in my studio, uninvited, unprompted, unwelcome. She accuses me of stabbing thing, killing my therapist, which of course she knows that I'm seeing now because she's been spying on me naturally. Then she starts whipping out belongings of the people who've been killed by the monster. And I'm like, hold on, I'm being framed. What is this madness? Then the police come in and arrest me on the spot. Great. So then I'm in a literal jail cell and this girl has the audacity to come in asking me for help because for some reason I'm psychically connected to the monster. And you know what? It turns out the monster's freaking Tyler all along. I could have told you that, bitch. So while they were out there smooching the night away, I was here rotting in a literal jail cell. My life is now ruined. So I tell her to just leave because you know what? The prophecy can't happen if she's physically not here. Then freaking Tyler's dad comes to transfer me in a cop car when he gets a call saying that something's going down at Nevermore. But instead of going there, we stop in the woods because because this dude's tracking his monster of a son. Anyway, he just abandons me in the car, but luckily Thing comes to bust me out. And you know, while I was incarcerated, I missed a thing or two. Apparently Thornhill, the plant teacher, is Tyler's master, and she helped Crackstone rise from the dead, and now Wednesday's full on battling him. I run to the school and grab my bow and arrow so that when I get to the battle, I can shoot Crackstone, and I do, but apparently he has magic because he stopped the arrow in midair and reversed it, caused it to fly back at me, but Wednesday jumped in front of me, therefore saving my life. So she does care. She tells me to help evacuate the remaining kids because apparently I'm no help in hand-to-hand -hand combat, clearly. All of us unhelpful folk are waiting in the woods for the battle to be over. Eventually, Enid comes out of the woods looking pretty battered and bruised. But not too long after that, Wednesday, Eugene, and Bianca come back victorious. So everything turned out pretty good, except Principal Weems actually died. That was, that was pretty tragic. Classes are canceled for the rest of the semester, but before Wednesday leaves, I gift her a very lovely phone. My number's already in there. And now that Tyler's gone, you know what this means? I win the love triangle by default, baby! So yeah, Xavier kind of went through it. Some of it, I'd argue, is self-inflicted because he actively chooses to get involved with Wednesday. So whose fault is that? This show was a fun time. I had a fun time. I hope you had a fun time. Be sure to check out Surfshark and click the link in the description. Hope y'all have a good holiday season, a nice break, all that stuff. See you next year! Ah!